Hello there everybody. It's a wonderful day. The sun is shining. I'm on fall break for two weeks and we get to talk about some comic books. Today on Uncanny we're going to be looking at a an interesting topic and that is indie comics. What are they? What makes a comic book independent? And what about some comics that are so well beloved and so almost mainstream now? Are they still indie comics? So I want to start this off by what is an indie comic? An indie comic is short for independent and it is generally made by a creator or creators that are either self-publishing or publishing with a small company. The comics are usually creator owned which means a big studio such as Marvel or DC does not own the rights to the characters. And usually that about sums up what an independent comic is, at least on paper. Now there are comics out there like Sean McKeever's The Waiting Place that are undeniably independent. One, it's, it was not originally produced by a big company. It was basically self-published. It was a creator-owned comic. And... Originally, it was put out by Slave Labor, Slave Labor Graphics. Now, if you've never seen it, this is The Waiting Place. It's a real-life story, if you will. It's not based on a true story, but it's it's not fantasy. It's not superheroes. It's not sci-fi. It's, it's a real-life sort of experience. And it's very good. The original volume, the first volume, is drawn and inked, let me just check this out, yeah, Brendan and Brian Frame are the artists on it, and into the subsequent chapters of it, Mike Norton is the artist. Now, Sean McKeever and Mike Norton both became somewhat big. They went on to work for DC and Marvel, created the superhero Gravity. Mike Norton currently has his own webcomic, Battle Pug, and Sean McKeever is bouncing around doing different things for, for the big two. And so they're, you know, they, they could come up with a new indie thing. Battle Pug is most definitely an indie webcomic, but just about every webcomic out there is an independent. Um, so that's a clear-cut case of an indie book. A somewhat less clear case might be that of Brian K. Vohan's Saga, which is one of the best books out there today. And that's not just my opinion, that's my opinion of just about everybody outside and inside of the comic book industry. They just love this book. And it is a book published by Image Comics. Now, Image Comics started in the early to mid 90s by creators from the big two, primarily from Marvel Comics though. And it was a way to have create their own books, but have them be all under the umbrella of one company. So does this umbrella mean that the books aren't independents? For a while at Image you had a bunch of studios. You had Wildstorm, you had Extreme Entertainment, you had Aspen Comics, you had a bunch of different things and you weren't really sure whether these were, whether you could consider image an independent comic company. Then Wildstorm was bought up by DC and everything else just kind of fell along the wayside to where books like Invincible and The Walking Dead are 100% creator owned. They were so well received that Robert Kirkman was made one of the partners of Image. And Saga is a comic brought up by Image. Now it's completely creator owned like all independent comics are. And that's about it. I, personally, I would consider it an independent comic. Its level of quality in writing and art and production are that of a big two company. Uh, a lot of times an independent comic is not quite as well produced, especially in art or color but we're going to get to that in a second. Now the third example I'd like to make is that of 
the comics that are created by a studio that are not as large as the big two, that, you know, have creator-owned stuff, but they also have a lot of licensed stuff. And specifically, I'm going to look at Boom Studios. Now, I can make the case for Boom or Dynamite or, you know, a few years back, um, Devils Do did this as well. But Boom Studios is kind of the biggest up-and-comer in recent history. And they have books like Mark Waid's Irredeemable and Incorruptible. They have uh, Dracula, Company of Monsters. They have a lot of other licensed things, especially in the horror genre. Now, Irredeemable is a superhero book, or a supervillain book, if you want to look at it that way. It's creator-owned, written by Mark Waid, but it's owned and I'm going to do that. It's owned by Boom Studios. It's published by Boom. And Boom works with a lot of companies that put out, that, that own the rights to like monster movie characters. So, to me, that's a little shadier counting it as an independent comic. Maybe you just might want to call it a smaller press comic. So, that's a look, a little bit of a look into what is and isn't an independent comic, the line's really blurry. You know, obviously something created by Marvel and DC is not. And I say clearly, but then they have imprints, like Icon for Marvel, who puts out the Powers books, uh, Vertigo, until just recently, for DC. And, you know, DC had all these imprints and they did away with them and tried to meld everything into the DC universe. How's that going for you guys? But now I want to look at what I like to think of as a coin toss. And in independent comics, the coin toss is this. Either you have an amazing book with great writing, which means your plots and your storytelling and your dialogue are spot on. You know, your pacing is really good. Also having good art and good production values production values being the inking, the coloring, the printing. You know, if you have all those, you can have an amazing book. On the other hand, there are those indie comics, and this is the vast majority where something's missing. At least one thing's missing. Maybe the art's just not quite right for the style of the book. Maybe it's black and white, and it just feels, it feels too, too indie, almost. And sometimes that's a, a, a good thing. Um, Jeff Smith's Bone, when that first came out, was black and white. And they've since gone back through and colored it. I have the black and white version. I love the black and white version. The Waiting Place is black and white. But it's got this kind of clerk's vibe to it. Obviously not the same humor or same type of story, to a point. But that black and white, no shadows, no shading, just really, or no shading, plenty of shadows but just kind of a gritty, really, like, purposefully independent look. Um, but I've seen comics out there that have been Xeroxed and stapled together that that's a low production value. You know, sometimes the stories, the plot might be good, the dialogue might be okay to good, but the... the the way it's plotted out, the tempo it goes at, that might be slightly off. Maybe they go too slow in one section and rush another section. Oh, I've got to hit it in 22 pages. Do, 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 do. Oh, too much. And that's a trick. It, it, it's a tricky thing to get. Writers have a hard time getting their stories into a certain amount of pages without leaving things out and without sacrificing quality. So that's the coin toss. Either you have something great, like Saga, or you might have something less than great that you see, you know, what I'm going to call them, the struggling artists, and I include myself in this. Um, trying to get things sold and it not working. Now, uh, a little story about that. In 2005, uh, I was part of a creator group called the Comic Creator Syndicate out of South Bend, Indiana, and we created an anthology called Syndication. 
Now this was made up of about eight to ten page stories that were made by teams of writers and artists and we had them professionally printed. It was black and white interiors, uh, inked and no, you know, inked, crisply done, good quality printing. We perfect bound them just like a graphic novel cover. And we have a 75 page anthology. Now the first thing we did with this was we took it to Space, which is a small press and comics expo in Dayton, Ohio, I think. No. Cincinnati? Toledo? Somewhere in Ohio. And it's bugging me. Maybe it was Columbus. I don't remember anymore. Um, and we went there and we got an amazing spot. We were next to uh, our publisher, if you will, buymetoys.com, which is the comic book store that kind of kind of sponsored our group. We had our meetings there. Um, one of our members was the writer on a comic that the owner of Buy Me Toys was put out called the Oz Wonderland Chronicles. Um, he was also the writer on the Hedge Knight and the Hedge Knight 2, which are prequels to Game of Thrones, Song of Ice and Fire. Um, and so they were there, then us, I got to sit next to Sean McKeever, and then we had the big comic book company of that town having their own booth, and then the guest of honor, honor, which was Mobius. So you'd think that would be a sweet spot, like, oh, we got the prime realty. It's also right, everybody kind of needed to walk right near us to get into everything. We got ignored. Nobody sold a book. This was the complaint we had people telling us. Our book's too professional looking. It's an indie. It's as indie as you get. It's create our own stuff. You know, we paid to have it printed. We just didn't settle for, you know, Xeroxes and, you know, Ashcan style things. We wanted a comic that we could be proud of. So here's the thing if you're an independent comic creator, if you're making your own stuff, even if it's a hobby or you're looking to break in, don't skimp. Do it right. Make sure your stories are good. Make sure your art is right. Make sure your production values are where they need to be. Forget what everybody else in the independent comic circuit says. If you want to make it, if you want to be noticed by many people, do it right. Don't do it right, it's not worth doing. Now, that's it really for independent comics. Independent comics can be great, they can be lousy. Just like mainstream comics can be great or they can be lousy. If you're an independent comic creator, whether it's great or lousy, is up to you. If a book fails, there's nobody to blame but the creator. If a mainstream comic fails, there are plenty of people to take blame. So, keep making comics, keep reading comics, and until next time, this is Baca, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.